Welcome to the Deadly Dixons channel. I'm going to be talking about a favorite movie of mine, First Blood. First Blood came out in 1982. One of my first real vivid memories of going to the movies with friends. Oh, was this one? No, I don't think I went with a Guardian. But holy shit, I love this movie. This movie really fucking. Knocked it out of the park for me. There's so much going on behind the scenes with this movie. But it's directed by Ted Kotcheff. And obviously starring Sylvester Stallone, Richard Crenna, Brian Dennehy. And I think a young, um, what's the guy from uh, one of those cop shows is in this. But First Blood, I think it's been renamed Rambo. First Blood or whatever. I just cannot get enough of this movie. I think at the time, I was a little unaware of the general sense of uh, what the Vietnam War had done. Although, because of fr family and friends of family, I was aware of a couple of cases that were not like the movie Rambo, but were like, uh, be careful with this person. and interventions in, in people's lives. like Those things did happen. I was aware of that. But in 1982, I'm 11 years old, 12 years old. This is uh, a mind-blowing movie for me. I love uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger movies and dealing with Cohen and Predator, some of his finest work. But in my opinion, Arnold never had a Rocky. Now you're looking at Sylvester Stallone doing First Blood. And I think for me, comparing careers, I'd give Stallone the edge. Not that you want to do, you have different criteria. Look, Arnold's made an insane amount of fun, really good action movies. They're just phenomenal in some sense. But when you're talking about like the acting and the realism of the character, this was a, a breakaway for me, being such a fan of Rocky. And at this time, I think there were two Rocky movies out. I'm not sure what came out, if Rocky Three came out before or after this. And there's so much going on behind the scenes here, like the movie trying to be made. It's based on um, a novel called First Blood by David Morrell. And there, are, like, I don't know what is exactly rumor. Doing a little bit of research before I. Uh, write a quick outline. It's like, oh, Al Pacino was given the was offered the part. So many people, you know, offered the part. But in in a general sense, I can gather that eventually Sylvester Stallone said, "I, I could work with this, but we got to change it." And he cut all his dialogue out of the movie. Well, you know, most of it, saying that you know he shouldn't be a, you know talking type character and holy shit it works how do you get an actor who comes in and goes i don't want that many lines this this is, has to be a visceral image of a man pushed beyond uh the point of no return you have sylvester salone i think it's several years after the war going to visit a friend uh walking on the road with a duffel bag going to visit a war buddy, finding out that he passed away from cancer. And I think they connected it to the Agent Orange, which was being used in Vietnam. And he's wandering to town, he's leaving, or he's walking around, and the fucking sheriff pulls over, you know, snarky fucking cocksucker, and he says, okay, you know what, I'm going to drive you out of the town, where you're headed, alright, keep going on this road, and you'll, uh, you'll get there. Basically, get the fuck out of my town. I don't want no vagrants. Uh, that type thing. And it just... There, there's the moment. Because <clears throat> the sheriff pulls away, drives away, and Rambo just turns, looks back, and decides, I still got more to do in this town, or I'm not going to be railroaded by some fucking small town sheriff. So he starts walking back, and that's it. Sheriff pulls, turns around, puts him in the car, 
and proceeds to treat him like a fucking asshole. They abuse, like, hey, look, it's a movie, but they fucking go too far. They are abusing him in a sense, and then they go to fucking shave him because he's got the, uh, um, you know, like a, uh, not a beard, but he's got that five o'clock shadow all over, you know, but it's all over his fucking face. And they go to shave, and he has fucking flashbacks, and he breaks out of the fucking sheriff's station, fucks some people up, grabs his fucking knife with like a, a tank top on or something, and he just. Heads out, grabs a fucking motorcycle, gets away. And all fucking hell breaks loose. This movie is great. And you're watching it, realizing that this could be a real person. Now, yeah, okay. Let's not talk about... At the end of this, I'll talk about the franchise in general. Or, you know, <laughs> what it becomes afterwards. But this is a man trained by the government to be a killer, to survive. And... He freaks out, and he runs. They chase him into the fucking woods, hell-bent on, you know... You could tell that they're portraying it, that the police, you know, being a little too aggressive. But, you know, look, he was just told to leave. He should have left. But here we are. He's broken uh, fucking sunglasses guy, uh, fucking cop show. Fucking name. I forgot his name, but it's just... Uh, you know, he fucks some people up getting out, and they get pissed, and they're looking for him. Oh, David Caruso. Hey, the motherfuckers in this, uh, really young looking. All right, so they fucking chase him down. I don't give a lot of plot uh, stuff and spoilers, but this is so old. Rocky basic, um, <laughs> Rambo basically throws a rock at a fucking helicopter, and because the guy was leaning out trying to shoot him, the fucking helicopter jerks. The guy falls to his death. And that's it. The sheriff goes fucking berserk. He wants revenge. And Brian Dennehy. Great performances from everybody in this movie. And it's shot well. It's like you feel how cold he is. You feel how um, the environment is affecting him. He's fucking shivering. He's ripping uh, car seat lining and throwing it over him. It's just, you know, epic story. Uh, from that perspective, you know, being at the age I am, this is just blowing me away. And then let's not talk about the, you know, uh, all the genre of movies that came out around this time, Missing in Action and Chuck Norris and stuff. But this is really deep, serious. You feel the impact of what's going on. So Rambo just goes and says, look, I'm going to hide out in this fucking forest. Leave me the fuck alone. And Brian Dennehy, sheriff, just will have none of it. Goes after him. Long story short, Rambo fucks them up. I don't think he kills anybody, but he fucks people up. There are, like, booby traps he makes, hand-to-hand combat. And basically, he gets, uh, one by one, he takes them all out. And he leaves uh, Brian Dennehy's character alone. And he gets to jump on him, puts a knife to his throat, and says, that's it, you know, like, don't come after me, you fucked up, and let them live. Well, I think he lets them all live, but they're all fucking screaming in pain, they got spikes, wooden spikes in their fucking legs, and it's just, I think he kills a dog. And at this break in the movie, you just watch Sylvester Stallone just become this character who's got to survive on the land. And you're riveted, and then you got this other, um, this jackass sheriff calling in National Guard and, well, you know, get a manhunt going. And then, uh, what are they, what's his name? Colonel Troutman, played by Richard Kreiner, shows up. And what a great performance. He basically tells him, you're dealing with a Green Beret, Medal of Honor winner. Someone who's been trained to survive in guerrilla warfare. You're out. You're, you're you're in over your head. Look, let the guy slip through your men. Go to the next town, defuse the situation, and I'll have him surrender. And the sheriff's like, "Fuck you, no. You know, I want revenge now. To get my I got one of my deputies dead. He mangled my team. You know, you want to play 
argue and debate who was wrong first, whatever, fine, but you should have listened to Colonel Troutman. And then the next uh, act, whatever you want to call it, unfolds. And Rambo just slips through the fucking line. But instead of leaving, he commandeers a truck with a fucking M60 in the back. Sets up a fucking um, distraction and goes to the sheriff's station and has it out with the sheriff. Mind you, from the beginning of this movie to this point, you are witness to a damaged person just coming to the realization all his friends from Vietnam are dead. There's... Um, a haunting look to him that I recognize now being older. He would have just breezed through town. Yeah, he might have looked a little shady here and there. What is, you know, he he didn't have like a coat that said, ah, hey, I'm military. But he had that look, you know, the green coat. And now you see him push to the limit and he, uh, so, I'm sorry, when he's fucking in the woods uh, doing his thing, hiding out, they fucking shoot rocket launches at him, they think he's dead. Like, he fucking jumps off. This is some crazy shit, you know? You didn't see people jump from a cliff, use the trees to break his fall, and then sew his arm up. And let's talk about the knife. Holy shit, did everybody have this knife? Everybody had more than one. They started becoming, they would make cheap knockoffs for like $5, and you'd have your fishing line inside. Your sewing needle, your compass. What a a movie changed a lot of things in the industry for these types of movies being made. And just you gotta be surprised at this. I think it had any cartoons on this fucking movie. You know, cartoons about the character. You might have put him on a fucking GI Joe. You might as well. Uh, so he's in the woods before he goes back to the police station or the sheriff's office and fucks it up. And Troutman's talking to him. And he basically says, they drew first blood. And that's the title of the movie. It's something I, I'm so, you know, I do these things real quick. I turn it on. Uh, you know, During the week or something, I'll jot down my little outline real quick. You know, it's not much. And so before he goes to take revenge in the town and get the sheriff, he is contacted by his colonel. And he's trying to explain to him you know, to give himself up. Um, this one ain't this won't end well. And then one of my favorite lines, he's like, hangs up the call, and he, the sheriff's so intent on going after me. He's like, well, you're gonna need a lot of body bags. Just great uh, performance, delivered perfectly. Brian Dennehy is awesome in this fucking movie. I became a huge fan of him just from his portrayal in this. So now we're back at the sheriff's station. He takes out uh, Brian Dennehy. And just as he's at that point where he's like, I'm going to have to end your life because this is a, we're going to do this forever. Colonel Troutman shows up and says, look, you're surrounded. You, you kill this guy. It's over. And then it's never this epic fucking heart wrenching monologue by Sylvester Stallone, for me, gives me chills. It surmises and capulate, cap, you know, just puts everything in perspective about what this man has gone through. The stories he tells. The last of his elite forces. He can't get a job. He used to work with billion, million dollar equipment. He can't pump gas. It is oozing out and it just infects you. It, Surround you to make you realize the reality of the situation. We produce, we as a government, we as a nation, we as a world, we produce people to participate in war. And what do we do with these people when the war is over? Look at Sylvester Stallone, other than Arnold being a specimen, right? Sylvester Stallone in this movie is not the um, Mr. America bodybuilder, you can relate to him as being an everyday guy in that sense. You turn him into a super soldier, for lack of a better word, 
and he comes back and he tells about being spit on at the airport. And if this is five or seven years after he's been discharged, he's going to visit his friend. You can tell he's trying to fit in. He's trying to become part of this world that he's not familiar with anymore. And he's at home in the woods with crisis and conflict. And they sure got it. Holy shit, does First Blood really pull it home at the end. It's the last couple of minutes. So Vesta Salone is pouring his heart out. He's tearing up. He's crying. He can't believe what's going on. The things he's witnessed. You know, they show scars on him and they show the flashbacks that he's been tortured in Vietnam. Um, I think even David Caruso is sort of turning uh, at certain points in the movie. After he got his ass, he had to fucking broke his nose. They had tape over his nose. <laughs> well, the other guy did too. And he's like, this guy's a Korean fucking beret. We got um, you know, we can't just keep doing this. You know, in a way, it's going to be a public nightmare to begin with. And Richard Crenna, Colonel Troutman, is telling him, let it diffuse. Let him go away and cool down. Oh, man. This, I love First Blood. I just think it's a riveting movie. Sylvester Stallone is at his best to take a movie, analyze it, and go, yeah, I can do this, but we got to cut his dialogue. I'm not sure what is verified is true behind the scenes and who is offered the part, but I'm happy he took it. This launched a franchise, and I'll get into that now. want to reiterate the end of this movie, Sylvester Stallone's monologue, explaining to Colonel Troutman his position, his frame of mind, what he's been through. Holy shit. Just, what was it, back in the day? Let's give it two thumbs up from Siskel and Ebert. Ah, man. Holy shit. The end of the movie is amazing. Now, you know, I really enjoy the beginning of Rambo 2. You know, he's in prison. Hey, look, you want to alleviate your prison uh, sentence? Do a job for the government. You got to go away and take pictures and, you know, make the people happy about the prisoners of war. And Troutman convinces him. And I love the second movie. It's, it's great. I won't know if it's objectively great or critically great, but it's just one of the fun uh, action-packed movies Sylvester Stallone has done. I like the I'm going to come back for you because they leave him out there. He's like, oh, shit, he, I found fucking POWs. We weren't supposed to find POWs. That's the theme of that movie. I'm coming for you. He gets fucking tortured again. He breaks out. Loses a love. He kind of has an attachment for her. You're not expendable. Love the second movie. Now the third movie, he's fighting with sticks. He looks like uh, Rocky IV. He's ripped. And I think we're going off the rails from here. The one he did... Um... Shit, what was the, the one right before Last Blood? I love that one. He's like really thick and he's, he just looks like a monster. And he helps these, um, I think they're church members who are helping war torn or third world countries with food. And there's some fucking maniac. But still, you're looking at a guy who just the body count goes up. This movie. He shoots people with caliber guns. They turn into chopped meat. It's just insanity. And I'm disappointed in Last Blood. Y you know, it, it seemed like a really a good movie, but not a good Rambo movie. Not once did I feel like this was the Rambo I knew. Granted, it's his, you know, you know, last uh, thing on the, um, you know, things he wants to do as he's getting fucking old now. But Rambo Last Broad doesn't thrill me. It it really kind of uh, makes me think of um, missed opportunity. You know, all you had to do in that movie was, there's a part where he gets cut on the face by this guy. They leave him for dead. Why not cut him across the forehead? And then when he's being taken care of by the woman, she puts a fucking red bandana around his fucking head. Something 
So, you know, it just felt like this is just a Taken type movie, you know, you, which, which is good in a sense. I like Taken. Uh, you fuck with this guy's uh, daughter, niece, and he's going to come get you. Fine. And the twist here is, I guess, he lures them back and sets up a trap from his ranch that he's been preparing, you know. And being Last Blood, it, it, it's got some great moments. It doesn't feel like a Rambo movie, though. As a whole, I like the Rambo franchise. I'm okay with it. They, I'm entertained. But there's a couple of, there's a couple in there that just don't work for me that well. They're not in my you know, wheelhouse of rewatchability. You know, I watch Rambo 1 and 2. Um, like I said, the one in, um, God damn it, what's the name of that fucking movie? Jesus Christ. Now, I should fucking look for it here, but, uh, uh, well, yeah, First Blood, 85 was part two, hmm, all right, well, I can't really see real quick, uh, like the franchise itself, but I'd like to give it movie credit, though. Damn it. This is great to do on a podcast, too, when you're not fucking prepared. I'm in such a jazz mood um, in a Sylvester Stallone type of phase of doing a Rocky podcast. I have to do Rambo. Just great moment in childhood at that age. You know, I'm just about to become a teenager. I'm recognizing these type of traits and people or friends or family. And then you're immersed in this world of this damaged person who comes from a, a, such a traumatic experience and, and, and the expression of this with no not that much dialogue is is just riveting to me i would recommend this movie totally to anybody all right maybe not children okay i just think that it's uh it's something you have, you have to look at what it did for the industry you know, I'm not really, uh, you know, I'm not the biggest skilled introspective type uh, review. I want to do this just for fun. It's more discipline and therapy for me to be able to turn on mics and talk about things I love or dislike. But I think this is a pivotal performance of him. It really, uh, uh, just a great moment to see him do something like this rather than what he progressed into, which is, you know, look, being creative, uh, being an actor, taking parts, he wants to do comedies and other things. Uh, I think the Expendables are fun, but they're stupid fun. There's so much, um, you know, going on with uh, this franchise that I think it loses its steam at a certain point, but no less fun, in my opinion, to go back and watch the first two, and then if you want to catch up, you watch that, uh, I think it's the fourth one, right? You watch, like, the fourth one, and Last Blood, eh, I don't know, man. I'm just a little, uh, a little disappointed in that. So I can't say that it, uh, the whole franchise is amazing. Hmm. I would say the Rocky franchise is better because it's campy and corny as a god off the rails. It kind of lent itself to who Rocky was as a person, who, you know, this charismatic, bumbling idiot guy, uh, you know, with great heart and determination, makes it beyond uh, expectations. Rambo, this dark, uh, brooding uh, time bomb, they didn't keep the... The strength of that going in all the movies, in my opinion. They turned it into a little bit more of, um, I guess maybe let's just talk about this, just the third movie, really. That kind of probably turns me off to the, um, I don't think he was in Russia and Colonel Troutman got fucking kidnapped or something like that. It's just, I'm going to actually search for it while I'm doing this podcast. This will be a part.
Gotta get these names right. I think the first, fucking second one's just First Blood too. Oh, it's just called Rambo. Right? 2008. Huh. All right. So it looks like it's just called Rambo. <laughs> so it's First Blood, Rambo, First Blood Part 2, Rambo 3, Rambo, Rambo Last Blood. First one, amazing movie, great on all fronts, taking my bias out, I think it's an excellent movie. Rambo Part 2, I think it's, uh, I love the movie, objectively, it probably has more flaws, it's still a fun, enjoyable um, action movie. The third one's where I have a problem with, although I did like him cauterizing the bullet wound with uh, gunpowder, so he's got to make it a little bigger, right? Improvise. Rambo, I really liked. I really liked this movie. Uh, I think it, it hit home. The uh, the echoes of the first movie. Now, they tried this in Last Blood. Now, I'll give them credit. Last Blood, the last one that came out last year. Um, they do a thing where he takes his medicine and he gets... The, the, maybe the camera wobbles a little bit. Like He gets these anxiety or panic attacks. They build up, but he quells them quick. To me, that was... Um, one of the strongest ties it had to the Rambo character. You know, he's uh, at the end of um Rambo. Comes back from uh Arizona, whatever it is. Goes to his ranch, and that how it, that's how it ends. I thought it was a great ending. Then you heard about him trying to uh last blood. He'll be you know going out or something. Get, I don't know if he really. Give a spoiler, but you can't even tell if he's dead in the fucking last blood. You don't know what's going to fucking happen, but I just think it, it loses the heart and core of Rambo. So I would think the third one's the um, the weak link. The third one's the weak link. He's like, oh, I got to go with, um, I got to go rescue Colonel Troutman. Uh, I don't know. Is it like... um? Like Afghanistan, and they're fucking doing a, a fucking horse thing. It was, just, you know, okay, I get it. You gotta go rescue your former commander, Colonel. But it just seemed a little outlandish, a little too overboard. But I like where they came back to it in Rambo in 2008. And then they have a missed opportunity in Rambo Last Blood. So that sums up everything. But for the point of this podcast, First Blood is a recommendation, a highly recommended movie, really gets to the heart of it. Maybe uh, vets would disagree with me, but from a layman who hasn't been in Vietnam, who hasn't been in wars, Vietnam, I would have been like, I had to go back in time. I... I think it's a real eye opener to what was going on. It, it shed a light on for me what happens in this country or other countries. War is necessary sometimes. I get it. I would like for it to be peace on earth and everybody loves each other, but it's not going to happen. War can save lives to a certain extent. Fine. You want to get into the ethics of it. What happens to these people? We, we don't treat them right, we don't give them what they need. Um, right now in this time, day and age, we're fighting to get Medicare for all even, um, put out there, especially in a pandemic. This is a fucking ridiculous statement to make now. But what do we do with our vets? You know, how much coverage do they get? Their mental health, uh, the community, uh, friendships, the, the, the awareness of who they are, what we made them, what they had to do. Whether, you know, right or wrong in that sense, fighting for your country, look. But let's not pretend that the highest, some of the highest rates of suicide are in our police and our military. 
And I think this movie's a great eye opener for that. Yes, it's action. It's you know got its moments of flair, but deep down, it's this damaged person who has been created by war, trying to make his way in a world that won't accept him. And I think it's poignant to say, well, say again, part of his speech at the end. I was trained to use million dollar equipment, fly jets, do this, tanks, and I can't come back here and I can't get a job. Highly recommend First Blood. Watch it. It is one of my favorites of Sylvester Stallone's and in this genre, definitely the best. Give it a shot. Take care, everybody. Stay safe. Stay well. Bye-bye.